Now that we're more than two years in, what challenges remain? How are we addressing those challenges? Affinity is hosting roundtables with leading law firm administrators from across the country to answer these questions and more. Let's discuss and share solutions as a community. We'd love to hear your insights in the comments sections or join us for the next roundtable. I think what the pandemic has done, for the first time in our industry, we have a chance to do it different. We can try different things. Maybe there, we can build in a little more flexibility that, than we've had in the past. And I think this is the first time that everybody has sort of stepped back and said, well, let me look at our operations. How are we functioning? And could we be doing it better and more efficiently? Today, we're joined by Brenda Thompson, Ann Paisley, Jana Malloy, and Kathleen Rosello. We start by discussing the issues we've had from the start of the pandemic that we're still trying to solve. I think probably for, for our firm, the biggest issue, or maybe it's not the biggest, but it definitely prevails every day, is the cultural differences between our younger associates who want the flexibility of working from home and our older partners who, who yeah. see the importance culturally of having everybody here on a day-to-day -day basis. At the beginning, we were all scattered to the winds. And as things became safer, we brought people back in different ways. And then we went home again, and then we came back again. And then we had masks off and masks on. But the biggest thing is, is some of our younger attorneys would love to have the flexibility of being at home more often than they are. And our older attorneys feel like the culture of the firm has changed because we're not all here. And it's just kind of you know, who we are and what we do. And it's just different. And I think everybody's trying to figure out how to get on the same page. And it's been that way since the very beginning. I agree with you, Anne. We have the same issue. And it's really broken down to a generational issue. You have folks who are just used to being in the office and they want everybody else in the office. And we, we went through a little bit of a struggle. Well, you can just as easily call them on the phone as walk down the hall and go into their office. But it's just a mindset. And I think a lot of it has to do with I've always done it this way. I've been doing it this way for 30 mm -hmm. years. And we also have the younger generation of folks who they're being very productive working remotely. And mm -hmm. it's been a real boon to them to be able to juggle some things and, and work and not have the commute to come into the office, for example. In some cases, that saves people up to two hours a day. And that's a lot of time when you're responsible for billing your, your hours. I think now we're really having the same problem that Anne and Brenda talked about. And it's not really a problem. It's just that it does change the culture. And you can just call somebody on the phone, but will you? When you could just before go to their office like or yell across the hall, depends on how you're set up. Or one of the things I think they miss is, you know, if you're in the office, you overhear conversations. You learn that way. And so we don't have that right now too much. We do have a few attorneys who do like to come in all the time, so they do. Um, we don't have a requirement that they come. I don't know. It, the flexibility is good. It's good for me. I love it. But you do lose something in it. You do. We've been hearing a similar challenge from law firms across the country. Working from home has changed the culture of the firm. How is your firm addressing the shift in culture and those changes to the sharing of knowledge? Can your firm effectively operate with a work from home structure? We need assistance in the office on a daily basis because they're producing things for the attorneys and the client may come in and we need someone there, physically there. We might need somebody to notarize, although some of that's being done electronically at this point. It's, and it's something that I struggle with. Assistants can't do their job. I mean, you, you'll see behind me, this is all that paper behind me. My assistants, their desk looks just like that, if not worse just because the type of law that we practice. You can't have a, an electronic will. They just, they don't, they're right. not recognized in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You have to have the paper. We have people who come in for signings and there might be 250 pieces of paper involved in that signing. And then what, do you, then what we do with that paper afterwards, that's another 
whole thing that you can't do from home. And I'm like- just very thankful that we were already a cloud. You know, we worked in the cloud yeah. previously. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to shift and adjust. And I think that was probably a big hindrance for a lot of folks. So being on the cloud and to be able to remotely access everything that you're going to need was a huge help. I don't, I don't know how we would have handled it otherwise. And, and fortunately, like we didn't skip a beat. We really didn't. We kept producing at the same level that we had prior to the pandemic. If we didn't have that, I think it would have been a totally different story. You know, I don't think we're going to be making grand changes. We will have more flexibility and people working remotely when necessary. But I think the goal is to try to get everybody back into the office. I don't know that that the temperament right now would be to change that. Mm-hmm. I agree with I agree with that. I, I think there's so much positive that comes out of being together that you ha- have a little question and. And we might be a trust and estates firm, but there's 300 million different things that go on in trust mm-hmm. and estates law. So, and not everybody knows everything. So it's really great to just be able to walk down the hall, pop your head in the door and say, hey, I had this situation. What do you think? As opposed to having to, die, oh, I'm on the phone or I can't talk. It's, I think just that, that culture and, and we like each other as people too. When you don't see people at all, it's different. So any of the times I was at the office that somebody happened to be there, it was like old home week. Like, oh my God, how are you? (laughs) It's just nice. Like you said too, and that we've basically been living with these people for a long time and they are friends and they are family. And to not see them, it hurts. There are certainly pros and cons to the work from home model. Some firms are addressing this through a hybrid structure. Work from home some days, other days in the office. I think from a retention standpoint, we would like things to go back pre-pandemic. From a management perspective, yes, because I think navigating a hybrid world has been incredibly difficult. So it's been a challenge. I mean, we were remote, we came back hybrid in June, particularly with staff. Our attorneys were requested to come back a few days a week in October. We went remote again in December because of Omicron. And we just returned this week. It's been a challenge. You know, we, we separated our staff into two teams. So we have team A and team B, although I think there's colors, where we have support staff who are in the office Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they're remote Thursday, Friday. And then the other team is remote Monday, Tuesday, and then they're in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So all in day is Wednesday, but it provides a consistency of support from a LEA perspective across all departments and on all floors. And our, our attorneys at this point have been asked to come in at least two days a week. We have some attorneys who've been in the office every day since the pandemic. I mean, they just find it a lot easier to work. Would management like people to come back five days a week? Yes. I think collaboration. I mean, we've onboarded a lot of new attorneys in the hybrid environment. And some people who are just starting to come in are just seeing them face-to-face in person for the first time. It's, it's interesting to see how it will play out. I mean, we're hybrid this week. And it'd be interesting when I look at the card details to see who actually has come in. Uh, I would like to say that I need to come in and make sure the 16 year olds aren't smoking cigarettes while I'm not here. (laughs) You know, there's a degree, there's a degree of that, that not that you don't want to trust them, but it's like, if mom's there, it's a little different. Yeah. You know, it's true. And like, I'm on the mindset though, like we, we, we had our staff coming in and look, I oversee the support staff. Like I'm a firm believer in practice what you preach. Mm-hmm. If you want them in, then you need to be in. Oh, right. You need to, you need to support them, particularly with decisions. Consistency and structure are key to managing a hybrid work environment. With all the issues we still face from navigating the new work environment, We've also overcome a significant amount of challenges along the way. There's a lot to be proud of. Our office services department actually kept the, the firm afloat. People would type up letters and literally be printing things out in color and with electronic signatures and mm-hmm. printing stuff, FedExing it and doing everything. It's just, I think it, it allowed certain departments to shine. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately it was teamwork because it was, it was not a single effort. It was honestly, it was, many teams and many people who are involved, obviously, to, to, to be successful. And even from a management perspective, you needed your staff 
when you had your partners or department heads and mm-hmm. staying connected and being able to effectively maintain business in, in a remote world. Yeah, I feel, I feel like one of the things that I'm most proud of is, is, and I worked really, really hard at it was, was keeping us as together as you could be for 48 different people. It was, you know, just finding ways to, to connect and engage people. Cause you would have, we would have these zoom meetings and I'm sure everybody was like, Oh my God, not another zoom mm-hmm. meeting. Um, but really finding ways to excite people about engaging and keep them engaged in what they were doing. Um, so I think it's, and, and encouraging, being able to encourage those people when they got down. So it's, I think for me, from a personal, from a personal level, that was probably my biggest accomplishment. Well, I'm very proud. As you can imagine, our business was very busy the last couple of years with, with mm-hmm. the pandemic and we do trust and estates work. So we had so, so much work going on at the same time. But I think we were so flexible on how we could help our clients during that period. I mean, we did will signings out in, you know, in the cold on somebody's car roof and you know, mm-hmm. we've gone to people's homes. We've gone to the nursing homes. We've done anything and everything that we could to make sure that our clients felt that they were in a good position if something unfortunate would happen. So I, I take a lot of pride in that. I think in that comes absolutely from the teamwork of the people that I work with from top to bottom. I mean, we, we just did whatever it, it, it would take to, to service our clients. I think for us was that in a heartbeat, because, you know, they closed down in a heartbeat. We sent everybody home with the equipment they needed if they didn't have it at home. And so, you know, since we're, you know, manage our servers offsite that was easy for connectivity but we did have a few people who didn't have a computer we had one without internet access they all went home with their availabilities which was really nice i think the last two years have presented us with challenges we might not have anticipated there's a lot to be proud of from what we've overcome what are you particularly proud of Thank you for watching our roundtable discussing the ongoing challenges two years on from the start of the pandemic, namely managing a work from home policy and maintaining a firm culture without being face to face. We'd love to hear your insights on the topics discussed today. Reach out to us at info at affinity.com and let us know what issues you're facing and if you'd like to participate in our next roundtable.